The Utah Helicopter Vital Falls, my name is Blaine Gemmett, and today we're going to be talking about weight and balance procedure. And weight and balance procedure is used to make sure that our aircraft is going to remain in balance at all times during flight, even as we burn fuel off. And we're going to measure that both longitudinally and laterally, or side to side, of the aircraft. So I usually start with the longitudinal, and we use the formula weight times arm equals moment. Okay. And here I've listed already a scenario for our aircraft that we see commonly uh, for using 226 Whiskey Mike, one of our R22s. And its basic empty weight is 877.75. And the factory is nice enough to give us a moment so we don't have to compute that. And then we just add in our pilot and passenger times it by the arm, which can be found in the POH. In section 6, weight and balance, all aircraft have a weight and balance section in their POH. And then we do the math. And it comes out to have a moment of 1,018 and 283 inch pounds of moment and weighing 1,227 pounds and 75 ounces. Okay? In order to find the CG, we take the moment and divide by the weight and we get 96.3 inches of CG. Okay? And that'll come into play in just a minute. And then we add our fuel. And on any given day, we have about 16 gallons of fuel in our helicopter, so I decided to use 16 gallons. We break that up, one third in the ox and two thirds in the main. And that gets us very close. Okay? Which equates to 64 pounds in the main and 32 pounds in the ox. Again, we're using the arms found in the POH and we do the math out and add it together. And again, we take the moment divided by our total weight now to get another CG. Okay? And these numbers will come into play when we plot them using our POH, which we'll do in just a moment. Then I'll take and I'll do the lateral side. This is where we start dealing with negative numbers. Okay? Where you'll see on the left or the right side as we're looking forward at the aircraft is going to be negative and on the left side is going to be positive. Okay? Where now the passenger sits on the negative side and the pilot on the positive, that we can see the difference in the numbers there. But the procedure is the same, now we just have to deal with negative numbers. So we come out with a moment of 833 pounds divided by our gross weight and we get 0.7. Again, same thing with the fuel, one's going to be negative, one's going to be positive, and we do the math again to get the numbers. All right, now that we have our CGs and our weights, we can then take and plot the points on our graph, which is supplied again in our POH, but this time in section two of the limitations. And we have taken this graph and put it onto a full sheet that allows us to do a whole weight and balance in one with all the math and the graphing at once. So we're just gonna go ahead and show the graphing portion. So if we have a gross weight, and we always start without fuel first, if we have a gross weight of 1,227 pounds, we follow it over till we hit our CG of 96.3, which is going to put the point roughly there. Then we add fuel, which brings the weight up to 1,323 pounds and 97.1. Where the two points intersect, I make another dot. At this point, I can draw a line connecting them showing which way my center of gravity is going to move as we burn fuel in flight. Then we can take and do the lateral side as well, where we have the same gross weight, but now it's a 0.7. All I have to do is follow down the graph till I reach a positive 0.7 and place a point. I do the same thing for the width fuel weight of 1323 and 0.4. Follow it down till I reach roughly 0.4, draw a line, and I can see that throughout my entire flight my center of gravity will remain within the limits that the factory has set, we're good to go fly.